Hey everyone, welcome back to the neighborhood. It's your friendly neighborhood reviewer with Intuit Reviews. And today, we're going to be looking at the Shozy Neo CP. I don't know if I've heard a Shozy IM that I haven't liked yet. And for what they are, the Form 1.1, Form 1.4, and the Rouge are all pretty unique and fulfill niches within the audiophile marketplace. But what about the Shozy Neo CP? Let's get into it. So before we get started, let me give a big thank you and shout out to Farcel the Wizard for sending in the Neo CP to the channel for review. Farcel knew that I was pretty excited by the Neo CP since I discovered its existence. Why? Well, unlike Shozy's other offerings that I have reviewed previously on the channel, those were all hybrid IEMs, and the Neo CP is only constructed of three balanced armatures instead. I tend to actually like BA only driven sets if they do a good job of handling the low end and offer a natural tone rather than a metallic one. And while I acknowledge sets like those are a scarcity, I had hopes that the Neo CP would be a great one, given that I've heard other Shozy IMs to date and love those as well. But we'll get into how the Neo CP performs when we talk about the sound later. For now, let's start things off with the build. Like I've already said, this is a 3BA set whose drivers are encased in resin shells with MMCX connections. The shape of the shell is reminiscent of Shure IMs and it mostly fits comfortably in my ear depending upon tip selection. With most tips, my ear had plenty of clearance, but with larger tips the back curve of the IM might rest up against the posterior concha, towards the anti-helix. Even so, this wasn't much of a bother, but it did make the fit more awkward when utilizing rather large tips. Uniquely, the BAs in this set are resin encased, and there are sound tubes that are utilized to deliver sonics to and through the stem. This is a technique that in general is reserved for more expensive IMs, so this was nice to see. The set also comes with two sets of metal screw-on filters to adjust the sound to your liking. We'll get into the impact of these different filters on the sound when we get to that portion of the review. The colorway of the shells is described by Shozy as being a clear red and blue, but in actuality these look more like a metallic pink and teal in their colorway. The cable terminates in an unbalanced 3.5mm connector, and like I've said, it utilizes MMCX connections at the initiation joints. And this may be the best cable that I've ever received in a box with an IEM, at least from a touch and play perspective. It's soft to the touch, remains free from tangles with use, and seems like it will come with a much more expensive IEM. This is the type of cable that should have come with the Shozy Rouge. Beyond the cable and the filters, the Neo CP's package comes with a variety of tips and the standard black Shozy carrying case that also comes with the Form 1.1. Like in the case of the Form 1.1 and the 1.4, one thing to know about the included tips is that while you get a large amount of choices in terms of tip variety, you do not get many choices in terms of tip size, as only super small, small, and medium varieties were included for a number of different tip types including the double flange silicones that I liked on the Form 1.4 and also would recommend for this set. Other third-party tips that I also enjoyed on this set were the E-Pro horn-shaped ear tips and JVC spiral dots. The latter of which was my preference for what I'm going to be calling the laid-back filter, while the double flange silicones were my preference for what I'm going to be calling the intense filter. So in general, this is what I would call a neutral-ish set, with each filter actually pushing the tone of this IM towards either side of the neutral line. In other words, the intense filter was quite a bit brighter than the laid-back filter, 
which has a warmer tone in comparison. Nevertheless, this is a mid-forward set overall, no matter the filter. But the laid-back filter is smoother and more cohesive, especially in the mid-range, while the intense filter is more audibly W-shaped, with greater vocal separation and presence, greater bass percussion, and a heightened treble in comparison to the other filter. While the intense filter should be seen as a more average presentation in the grand scheme of things, it is also notably leaner and more piercing in comparison to the laid back filter, which has a thicker and smoother tone. With specific regard to the treble, graphs available online show that there is a relatively early roll off here, as things begin to drop steeply around 8K or so. I would suspect that these graphs were measured with the laid back filter, but I was unable to verify this in the course of this review, as these graphs also do not list which filter were used when the measurements were taken. Notably, I will say that there is decreased brilliance and air because of its early roll off, but this was also more noticeable in the laid back filter in comparison to the intense one. However, no matter the filter, there is some BA harshness, grain, or grittiness which negatively impacts clarity and resolution for this set on the whole, and also dates it within the audiophile marketplace. Nevertheless, I find the laid back filter more gritty and the intense filter more harsh in its upper mid-range and treble presences. The stage is also somewhat different between the two filters. The laid back filter provides a more spacious, natural sounding soundstage with good depth, height, and width to it, while the intense filter is more narrow and less cohesive overall. In other words, switching to the intense filter seemingly shrinks the soundstage. Consistent between filters, these IMs are straight up imaging monsters, and they have decent decay, good transients, and excellent peripheral details. But with that said, overall, I find the presentation of the laid back filters to be the more enjoyable between the two sets. On this set of filters, image placement is accurate, instrument distinction is impressive, and image separation is sufficient. With that said, this IM really suffers in the low end. The bass is rather one note, lacks detail, and often lacks presence even on its more intense set of filters where the bass has greater impact and pressure. But no matter the filter, the bass comes across as somewhat compressed and neither macro nor micro dynamics are particularly strong points on this set. And further, it's not really just the bass that suffers from compression here, but really the whole sound profile in general. In the end, it may sound like I'm being too harsh on the Neo CP. And honestly, I don't want to be, because ultimately, this is a pretty impressive IEM, even despite its faults. Having said that, its price is too high, and its level of resolution and clarity is insufficient to justify not only its price, but also its place in the audiophile marketplace at this stage in the game. This IEM screams that it's outdated. With regard to resolution, these are akin to something like the 10 Hi-Fi T4 at best, and fall in between the Forum 1.1 and 1.4, being better than the 1.1, but having less detail and clarity compared to the 1.4. And don't get me started with the Rouge. For the money, these don't do anything that the Rouge doesn't do significantly better, and at $180, I understand that the Rouge is $15 more expensive, and you will ultimately need to buy both tips and a cable with the Rouge, it's still worth it in my eyes to invest in the Rouge instead of the Neo CP. So unless you're allergic to a solid, linear low end, I can't imagine recommending these over the Rouge to anyone. In my eyes, by releasing the Rouge, Shozi has ultimately made the Neo CP irrelevant amongst its own IEM lineup, I just wish they would have given the Rouge the Neo CP's cable. But before I go, Farsal also sent me his newest Mark III T50RP mod, which he's calling the Feltonomicon. And let me tell you guys, 
These things amazed me. Generally, I have yet to be impressed by any of the Mark III mods that are currently on the market. This is mostly because these never seem to be as resolute or as clean as their Mark II counterparts. But after the Feltonomicon, I think that changes now. In fact, when I originally heard his mod, I wasn't paying particular attention to the driver type, and I just assumed that the Feltonomicon was made from a Mark II driver based only upon its sound. I was surprised to learn a few days later that it actually wasn't. It's uncanny how much this mod adjusts things to make them sound like Mark II drivers. I don't know what the magical spell Farcel has cast on this set is, but this is the closest thing to my Mark II Argons which I have heard to date, at least in terms of resolution and clarity for a T50RP driver. Having said that, it does emphasize certain parts of the frequency response range differently compared to most other Mark II mods. For example, Farcel's mod is more mid-bass focused and it has a clearly defined mid-bass hump. Of a particular note, there's definitely less sub-bass here than in my Mark II Argons. The mid-range itself is also more forward and enhanced in both presence and evenness. In other words, its V-shape appears more shallow and less prominent to my ears. Additionally, there is some defined energy in either its upper mid-range or lower treble, and while this borders on becoming shouty or peaky at times, it always seems to stay behind the line before venturing into harsh territory. The treble also has some pizzazz to it, but like most T50RP mods, it eventually falls off before it becomes a sibilance issue. The staging is also more restricted compared to an Argon, but it images more precisely and accurately. So the stage is different, and there is some intensity here or there to be aware of, both at the low end and in the upper ranges. But I actually think that the Feltonomicon may be my favorite Mark III mod which I have heard to date, and I am very impressed by what Farcel has put together here. At current, Farcel is using Ether CX pads as his pad of choice, but I ultimately think that these might sound better with alpha pads, and I've advised him as such. And I know that these may look a little rough around the edges to some, but keep in mind that these are an experimental prototype. Farcel also thinks that the external modifications, which make these a bit of an ugly duckling, may actually not be necessary. And while the wizard likes the idea of balanced dual entry a lot, I've also advised him that I would recommend that he keep the single-sided entry and convert it to balanced, rather than drilling additional holes. So if you're interested in an Argon alternative, you might want to consider these, especially since Argon production is currently suspended until December of 2020 it seems. Like I've described, it's a bit different in its presentation, but it's also cheaper and may actually be better sounding than others on the market. As of right now, what Farcel has told me is that he may be willing to share his schematics for how to implement this mod as open source material. According to him, the materials are easy to obtain, aren't really a huge investment, and are really easy to install, at least to accomplish things from a dampening perspective. But, if you feel uncomfortable, he also appears to be willing to do it for others for a nominal fee. So if you're interested in either case, I'll let you discuss that more specifically with him. He can be reached by an email, which is found in the About section of his channel. And again, I'll link his channel in the description below. So make sure to check it out and consider tossing him a subscription in support while you're there. Also, if you haven't done so already, make sure to hit subscribe here, like this video, make a comment, and tap the notification bell to get notified of future content from me. At a thousand subscribers, I'll be giving away another set of cost KSC-75s. So make sure to show your support here, and consider also following the channel at Instagram, Twitter, the blog, the Discord, or become a Patreon. The Patreon is only $1.50 a month, 
and it will get you access to early written reviews once the channel eclipses 1.1k subscribers. And with that, I'm out for now.